Okay, so now one question that, let me see. Okay, not here, so ask. Oh, here, okay. Right, there's a question that Maggie asked, right? Maggie asked, Maggie asked, if God knows everything, does God know everything? Yes, yes God knows everything. What does God knows everything mean? Yes. He knows everything. <laughs> what does, maybe I ask that out. What does God knows everything mean? Mabel. Everything is before him, okay. In terms of place? Everything, okay. So what are the everythings? Time, place, everything. Everything means everything, right? So this is God. This is the world this is the this is the world. This is the universe. God is outside even the universe. Who created the universe? God. In the universe, there's time, there's space. So when God says He knows everything, not only God knows everything at a certain point of time, He knows the future. Even the future and the past is before Him at the same time. Do you understand? Anna, do you understand? When God knows everything, is it only now He knows everything now or He knows everything about the future as well? About the future as well. So, so when uh, Maggie, when you ask God knows everything, it means also the future and everything, right? Everything. Now, you see, if God knows everything, then why did He create Satan? Knowing that He would sin and tempt men to sin. Correct? You ask that. Right? So if God knows the future, when God knows everything, means God also knows what men will do and what men will not do. Okay? So God knows everything. So who wants to try and answer? Jennifer, you want to try and answer? If God knows everything, then why did He create Satan knowing that He would sin and tempt men to sin? Why? Why? Say again. God allowed it. So God allowed it. Okay, maybe I ask the adults. Why do you think God allowed it? Shane, why? He simply allowed it. Okay. Simply allowed it. He simply allowed it. What about Benedict? Don't know. So, simply allowed it. I don't know. Okay. So, Maggie. So, someone said God simply allowed it. Then someone said, I don't know why. Okay. I don't know why. Okay. Um... Ilim, why? Or what do you think? Why did God, who knows everything, even the future, who knows Satan would fall, knows that Satan would tempt men, why did God do it? Why did God still create everything? He wants people to have a chance. He want people to have a chance. But if He didn't create them, people don't need a chance. Hmm. Chloe wants to answer. Is it because he wants to send his son Jesus? So Maggie is asking if he didn't, if he knew that men would die, uh, men would sin, then if he didn't create, then he didn't have to send his son. Hmm? So why? Why did God do it, uh, Maggie? Why do you think God did it? Don't know. Actually, the answer is here. He simply allowed it. Why? We don't know. This is called something. It's called what? Elim. You used that word before. Start with S. Say again. God is sovereign. <laughs> Alright? God is sovereign. Now we ask Elim to answer. What is the meaning of sovereign? He's almighty. Okay. He's almighty. He can control anything. Everything is... is he's above everything. Sovereign means that God, well, you know when a nation is sovereign, what does a nation is sovereign mean, uh, Brenda? When you say a nation is sovereign. 
you know the definition of sovereign? Okay, you know what's the definition of sovereign? What's the, what is sovereign? Um, God has absolute control, authority, and judgment. Absolute control, authority, and judgment. Okay? This is what, yes, many of these ideas. God is sovereign means God is absolute authority. He does what He wishes. He's in control. He does what He wishes. Does, it, does a sovereign country need to ask a nation, can we do this? Sovereign means you don't need to ask anyone. Okay, you're the ultimate authority. So God is sovereign means God is the ultimate authority. Right, Maggie? An ultimate authority does what He wishes. What he decides. So, Ilim, what does sovereign mean? Absolute control and? Absolute authority. And he does what he wishes. Okay, answers to no man, ask no man. So why did God, Maggie, why did God who knew that Satan would fall and would tempt man, and yet God would do it? Because God is sovereign. God chose to simply allow it. God chose to simply allow it. Okay, He is sovereign. So that's one thing that we learn about what God allow is His sovereignty. His sovereignty. Now, but then, why? Why? We don't know. God did not reveal everything in detail, but God did say that I do this, that my, my judgment, my, my righteousness is known. My righteousness is known. Okay, but there's one thing that we must learn about being a Christian. Wait, let me ask. Um, Emily, can you accept this? That God simply allow it? Can you accept it? Yes. yes. Why? Why, can, why you can I, Because I don't want to think. <laughs> okay, fine. Why can you accept it? Why would not resist? Because unbelievers would write many things about this. If God knew, why didn't He stop it? Why didn't He do this? Why didn't He do that? And all that. Right? How come for the Christian, for the believer, we say, yeah, we accept it. Why do you accept it? Why would, won't you say, God is unfair? Because we have faith. Because we have faith, faith in faith that... Faith... So, when uh, Emily says, Emily says, I can, accept, I can accept that God is, God allow all this, simply allow all this because I have faith. Faith at what, Emily? Faith in Him. What do you mean by that? Everything is His plan, but His plan don't sound good. So Maggie is asking, how, why? If God didn't do it, then everything would be good. So when you say you have faith, what do you mean? You trust that? You trust him? Okay. Maybe your sister help. Jesslyn. You trust that God is perfect and God is good. And so? So his decisions must also be perfect and good. Alright, Maggie? Now, how do we know that? Because, now, sometimes we do not understand things. So, Maggie, you asked a question which, which many people ask. Sometimes we don't understand everything. Now, but let's turn to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Actually, I should ask the adult because it's a very difficult question. Claude, why do you think so? How would you answer if Elim asked you before this Bible study, Daddy, why did God allow all this? How would you answer? Then you say, oh, because God allowed it, God is sovereign. So you use a word, God is sovereign. And then you ask you another question. But, but it's not good, right? Right, Maggie? God allowing it seems like it's not a good thing, right? That's why I'm asking. So how would you answer? Because we are limited, we are not as clever as God and God did things, uh, they, uh, He has a reason behind 
Okay, you heard your daddy, huh? What did he say? God is, we are, we are what? She was packing her bag. <laughs> Alright, so you can say again. Because your daddy say, you say, daddy, but why? Like Maggie asked, why, why did God allow it? And then daddy says, because we are, we are human, we are not. We are human, and because we are human, we are limited in our understanding, correct? What else did you say just now? God has a reason, but we don't understand why He did it. Okay? Why do you say that? Because the Bible tells us that. Now, Isaiah chapter 55, let's read verses 8 to 9. Isaiah 55, verses 8 to 9. Shall we read together? Are you there? Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, reading. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Alright, Maggie, oh, you, verse 8 and 9. Okay, verse 8 and 9. So, Anna, what does, it, what does all this mean? Can you explain verse 8 and 9 to us? His ways are higher, and his thoughts also higher than ours, right? Like Claude rightly pointed out, we are just human. We are finite. God is a spirit, and what? Infinite in his wisdom, correct? If God is infinite in his wisdom, can we understand everything that God thinks and does? We cannot. We are finite. We are finite, all right? So Maggie, why... God, God simply says that I allow it. And they say, why? When He doesn't reveal, he, God simply says, Now, please know I am much wiser than you. Is God wiser than us? Far more, as Uncle Claude said, clever. Right? Far more clever than us. God is infinite. His thoughts are infinite above ours. And what He does, His ways, are also infinite above ours. We cannot fully understand. We cannot fully understand, okay? So some things are like that. God is sovereign. Absolute authority. He just does it. He just does it. Now, uh, Phoebe. Do you understand everything that your daddy does? Very quick, no. <laughs> no. But do you think your daddy is cleverer than you? Okay, ask the right kid. Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. So, when daddy asks you to do something, or daddy asks something, do you just accept it? Okay. Do you? Why? Because you know daddy is cleverer than you. Right? This is God. God is far more infinitely, I would say, infinitely above our thinking and our ways. Our ways may look right. Now, Phoebe, do you like to play with... Do you like to play in the rain? You don't. Do you, what do you like to play? Do you like to play fire? Okay, too good a kid. Okay, ask the kid, do I like to play fire? All right, who likes to play fire? Good, all good kids. When I was a kid, I loved to play fire. I always take matches and light. So I love to play fire. I don't know why. It just, it just enthralls me. Fire. Okay, fire. Um, so, but when we are young, parents say, don't play with fire. But why? Fire is so nice. Fire is so fun. Everything, we don't understand why parents say don't. Alright? But when we grow up, we understand. Now, but still have this answer. Like Maggie asked, but you know, if God stopped, then, there are, then everything will be fine. There will be no sinners. Then we, there's no one in hell. Everything will be good, right? Looks like God did not make a good decision. Looks like God did not make a good decision. Hazel, how do you answer that? That's what she asked. Looks like it's not a good decision. Say again? It's still good. How do you know that it's still good? Because the whole world thinks it's not very good. 
All things work together for good. Can you think of a verse? Because like Emily pointed out, it's about faith, right? I have faith in Him. And Justin said, I have faith in Him that is perfect, that He is good. How do we know that? Emily, how do you, eh, Justin, how do you know that? Because it's the right thing to say. <laughs> how do you know that? God is infinite in His goodness and so on and so on, goodness and truth and everything. Now there's one verse, for example, among many, many verses. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 34. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. Okay, so... Now, this is a place where God will show himself to Moses. But Moses will just see the back of God. Then as God passes by, there are some things that are said about God. Alright? Understand or not? So God, God passes by. And then there is something that Moses only sees the back and there is something said to describe God himself. Now, the nature of God is revealed. Exodus 34. Now, shall we... Um, Read verses 5. Um, let's read 5 and 6. Are we ready? 5 and 6. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. You see, as God passed by, God tells man his character. Right? So that God tells man his character. What did God say? Okay, maybe I ask. Veronica. What did God say about himself in verse 6? He is? He is merciful. He is gracious, long suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. Alright, Maggie? Is God abundant in what is abundant? A lot. You know, a lot. Plenty. Abundant in what? God is abundant in? Look at your Bible. God is abundant in? His? In verse 6. Goodness, right? Very good. You see, like, like so that's where we get it, Jesslyn. Verses like that. God is abundant in His goodness. And God is perfect. Means God is always true. God never makes any mistake. God never does anything that is wrong. He's perfect. He always does the truth. Can, do any, can God do anything sinful? Because God is abundant in truth. Right here he tells us, abundant in truth. He's perfect. Anything that is true, that is good, it, is, it describes what God is. Perfect. Okay? So Maggie, when God does it is simply that he chose it why his ways and his thoughts are above us and then we begin to think about god that cannot be good do you sometimes think god that cannot be good doesn't look good when i read the bible the bible talks about capital punishment the whole world say it is no good the world say many things that god god can't be good if god is good how come there is tsunamis that kill people right if god is good then how come there are earthquakes now, then that is where, is faith here? Faith, faith is not here. That is where faith comes in. Like Emily said, I, I just have faith. The world thinks it is not good. My friends say it is not good. How can a good God do all these things? But I simply have faith that God is perfect because He said so, that God is good because He said so. And therefore, Maggie, what God chose to do, what God chose to allow, must it definitely be good and perfect? Yes. That is how we simply accept that God is good. Faith. Now, you can, uh, someone can keep arguing with you, right? CP, what if someone keeps arguing with you? No, I cannot accept this. Just because your God says that He's perfect and He's good, and He said that about Himself, 
I cannot accept God is, is wicked, God is evil. How can He allow suffering in this world? How would you answer, CP? Maybe in your heart you begin to, yeah, I don't know how to answer anymore. Oh no! Maybe God is not good. I don't know, God is God. God say so. That's it. That's it. So you're simply applying what? Faith. You're simply applying faith. That's all. That's why belief in God is about faith. Salvation is about faith. Putting your faith in what God say, correct? The reason why you're safe is because you put your faith in what God says. What God says about salvation? All my good works cannot save me. Chloe, can you think, do you think you can go to heaven by being a good Chloe? No. You go to heaven because, be, how? Because you? You have faith in who? Faith in God. That God says, believe in Jesus, trust in Him, He paid for your sins. That's it. Faith, alright? Now, after we are saved by faith, how should we live? Uh, Cornelius, how should we live? After we are saved by faith, then how should we live every day? By? By sight. By the Bible, okay? By having, it's also by faith. He said we are saved by faith and we live by faith. What did God say? Without what you cannot please God, Shane? Without? Without faith. <laughs> you know why? Wow, it's so simple, right? <laughs> no, no trick. That man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the word of God. It means faith. So without faith, no man can please God. Without faith, you cannot be saved. And after you get saved, Without faith, you cannot please God. Understand that? So at the end of the ACP, it's right. It's like that. It's like God says so, then that's it. You know, that's it. Alright, um, uh, Maggie, it's by faith that God is good, God is perfect. Therefore, even He does something I don't understand. And my friends challenge me, then by f the just shall live by faith and only faith can please God. I simply believe in Him. That's it. The Christian must have a clear understanding of that. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Otherwise, you will also doubt God. Yeah, it's right, huh? it's true. Huh? Let me go to church and challenge the church people. That kind of thing. So you begin to displease God, all right? By faith. Now, then, Susan. Okay, law students will know the answer. Uh, Justin. All right? Justin, haven't go to university. Alright, Justin. Then your friend said, I uh, blind faith. You just have faith that there is God. You just have faith in all these things. So silly, faith. Justin, you go to school, right? You know, you should be scientific. Just because God said, I am a God, then you believe. How would you answer? Your brother smiling very, very broadly at you. <laughs> He's looking, yes, how you will answer? How would you answer? Uh, their argument is unscientific. Their, arg their argument is unscientific. What do you mean? Because God is creator of all things. God is creator. Do you see God creating? So they say, you say God is a creator. Alright, so young people, if Jennifer keeps saying, but do you see God create the world? No. Now how can you believe? Then why don't you believe there's a God? Huh? No, the third person I say I don't believe in a God. You know all these things I don't believe. How, you, do you see God create the universe? Were you there? So is it a circular argument? What's a circular argument? You want to draw circles? What? Um, What's a circular argument? They, they will keep re-emphasizing. Yeah, so they keep re-emphasizing, right? All right, Susan, how? You know, do you see the? Do you see God create the world? Do you see God and not see that He's perfect and He's good? Just ask them back. Um, ask them back. Did you see... Like you always do to me. <laughs> ask them back. Ask them back what? Uh, I mean, assuming they believe in evolution, you can ask them whether they were there when they were 
Right, so if they keep saying, then if they keep saying, I believe in evolution, how can you believe in creation? Were you there or not? So what would you say to your friend? Were you there when evolution happened? You were not there also, right? Then he said, how, you didn't see the world, God create the world. Elim, do you see God create the world? I know you're from a Christian school. But outside, your friend said, but, do you, but I don't believe because I didn't see it. So what will you answer? In your own heart. I have faith in God. In our minds, we also think. It's the same, right? You were not there. How did you know it did not happen? How did you know it did not happen? Were you there and, and know that it did not happen? Do they have faith? Mabel, do they have faith? They also exercise faith. I need to understand. Chloe, do you understand? When someone says no, 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 it did not happen, they are also exercising faith. Correct? They are exercising faith in what they believe. But we are exercising faith in what God says. Correct? So who is their God? Chloe. Their God is themselves. To them is what I say, what I see, I believe. So they are also exercising faith. So in the end, they are also needing to have faith. But we put our faith. So at the end of the day, it's about faith. Okay? Justin, alright? Okay, is that. But I'm not saying you keep picking arguments with people, alright? But in your heart, you must be firm. Yes, at the end of the day, some things we can't explain, but God is sovereign. God is good, God is perfect. We trust Him. Faith. Then you can please Him. Otherwise, you will displease Him. Alright? So, Maggie, answer your question. Why did God allow it? Simply because He allowed it. But is it not good? They say, God is always good and perfect. So, I just trust Him. Okay? Alright? Okay. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts, uh, what church dropouts say, why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from